gas station employees can now finally live their dream of playing college football. Times are changing in the landscape. NIL has opened up a new era of football and a new era of dreamers. Corporations creating universities is not a new concept. Look at Walmart University, Costco University, McDonald's U, all kinds of employee training and education out there. Now, a corporation taking it to the next level and adding a D1 SEC bound football team, that's different. But that's exactly what old Bucky's did alongside their arch rival 7 11. Gas station employees can try out for the team and get compensated for their full salary if they make it. Bucky's already recruits the best employees, so no surprise here to see that they already have a hot roster in year one. Hailing from Arvada, Colorado, all-star beef jerky restocker and security, Beef King has one year left of eligibility and is ready to leave it out on the field. This cashier was a wizard at counting change. Now he can be a wizard on the gridiron with elite potential quarterbacking this team. The list goes on from Jack Muskrat to Avery Fudge and Johnny Nugget. The goal is simple. I can only recruit players from Bucky gas stations, which means I got access to only 10 states. They have been expanding with recent additions to North Carolina and Colorado. Texas clearly has a lot and Florida will be another great state to recruit from. We must go and get that national championship within five years. And along the way, I need to win the series against 7-Eleven. Trust me, I hear a lot of good things about Dylan Cheek. He's one employee of the month for the last seven months straight. Beautiful. You love to see Ben Ruffin, the number one gas station employee recruit on the board here out of Tennessee. Bucky's got one of those. But for example, Lamar Coco out of Louisiana, that's a no-go. 7-Eleven might be able to swoop him up. I've only scouted out four prospects and I can tell you it's already over. Bucky's is going to be running this thing in just a couple of years. Manuel Martinez, five-star gym, 96 throw power, 87 speed. He works the car wash at Bucky's and dude has got a bright future. It all makes sense to me why Mike Samlin is a sandwich crafter because he has the fastest hands in Florida. 99 speed and platinum shifty. He can work his way in and out of tough lunch crowds. Dude is going to be a king on the gridiron. We just got to get our name in the hat. To really put our roster to the test, let's start on the road against Notre Dame. Notre Dame has us beat on paper, but not in heart. The team builder that I downloaded had a unique set of jersey selections. The away, but one of my favorites, the retro beave. Turn back the clock. Good old beaver nuggets. But yeah, against Notre Dame, we're going to pull out the the retro beeves the fifth toughest place to play that's exactly what jerky is working with here starting off the game cold but he finds muskrat little check down it's going to be important for him to build some rapport so let's go ahead and try to make the easy play one at a time from the gas station to the gridiron this is what dreams are made of speaking of gas maybe gas on the outside here will get a streak and get past the notre dame db why not let it fly to double coverage yeah that was scary in year one of the rebuild we're clearly not ready for that so let's just keep it simple here. Scramble out to our left. We got a wide open tight end across his body. Singleton hauls it in. That was highlight material. Jerky, my boy. The only thing that was getting jerked at that last play was the defense. Expert work there. Get around the edge. Breaking a tackle. This freshman means business. Following the first drive all the way through. This is historic for the gas station squad. Who's going to come home with that first Bucky Nugget? Maybe beef here on the outside. No. Horrible, horrible ending. Jerky just threw one into coverage. Anticlimactic finish to drive number one. If you work at Bucky's, you already know you got to turn around an unfortunate circumstance. Put it behind you, get back out there, go and perform. Even when we're down 21-0, there's always more opportunity to shine. Jerky hurrying his boys back up to the line. One-on-one -on -one out here. Does he have separation? Muskrat comes down with it. Who asked for fresh brisket on the board? Six. Touchdown. Beef. That's going to get us right back into the game. A strike from Jerky. Fourth down, trying to keep the old dream alive here for the Buckster. That's going to be double coverage and ball game. A flop in the first inaugural game for this school, but that's okay. We'll be right back to fueling up our guys, take a pit stop, grab some snacks, some protein, whatever you need, and we'll be back on that field. The first step in fixing a team that can't beat Notre Dame is recruiting. And our first piece of the puzzle is coming together. Richard Fernandez, gem four star, 94 throw power, 84 speed. Lovely to have you out of Cypress, Texas. Remember how I showed you a five-star gem, 96 throw power? Yeah, we let him go. He was not really up to par. Started falling asleep in the break room and everything. So Ben Ruffin, the number one national player, number one employee of the state of Tennessee, looks like a great choice. If all goes well in Dylan Cheek's visit this week, we may be able to steal him from the grasp of Tulane and Baylor. Back on Ben Ruffin, we just scheduled a visit against our arch rival, 7-Eleven. Oh man, Cheek was not about it. That's Cheeks. Mike Sandler, 
Land 99 Speed also coming to visit during 7-Eleven week. And hey, now through five games, we took the dub over Utah State, Ohio, and Vanderbilt. Not too shabby for the inaugural season thus far, but a mean SEC awaits. And then somehow 7-Eleven already securing the 13th spot in the nation. I don't think I've introduced you to Sir Sponge yet, the general manager of this Bucky operation. He has an eye out for talent. That's how they get some of the best employees in the biz. And it doesn't hurt the fact that Bucky's pays assistant general managers $125,000 a year. So that's Colt Brazos and Paul Heath's salary. Sir Sponge is the GM GM. He gets $175,000 in salary with incentive based on performance. The more cats he racks up like Paul Labue here, five-star gem right tackle, the fatter that paycheck gets. George Barbosa, four-star gem corner. Joey Rucci at a Rowlett, Texas, another gem. We are essentially assembling the Avengers of Bucky employees. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Maybe a potential video. Ben Ruffin is in, but for the sake of our other two top recruits, we have to go ham on 7-Eleven. The battle's getting tight. A strong recruiting class in the wings. Our team is taking a little bit of a stumble here. 7-Eleven, full steam ahead. 91 overall across the board. 7-Eleven has their home unis, their away unis. The cheddar alternate, throwback home. Those look clean. Throwback away. And yeah, this marks the start of a fierce rivalry. So we're going to give them a taste of our beaver nugs. That's right, red turf as far as the eye can see. That is what we're working with here in Jerky connects to Bradford. First down. Can't keep jerking around with 7-Eleven. Gonna show him why we're supreme when it comes to convenience stores. Heck, you can tell we have a lot of fans. This stadium is packed given the fact that we're a three and five unit. 7-Eleven keeps bringing the pressure. We need to convert on his fourth down. Great play. Standing atop the old buck. Let's go ahead and spread them out. Middle, high, low. See if anything opens up that defensive line could not get anything there at all even if we wanted to forced to take a deep shot turnover so many and i mean so many recruits are visiting this game ain't no way we let them down we got a ball out first in goal they plunge in that was easy you can pretty much guarantee that there'll be no more foolish play calling like that last drive just a methodically thought out drive pound in the stone third and 15 red zone split denied fourth and 15 just gonna snap kick and take three brisket on the board massive third down we have to stop these guys slip screen no one there and no one home to get a stop 7-eleven scored on that so it's up to the bucky beavers to drive down the field with two minutes calling for a bench that should work look at beef get open down the sideline absolute stellar play straight out of colorado he was working hard at the newest facility that just opened up no way jerky stop jerky me massive and i mean massive setback on that fumble it's gonna be tough to get these yards back on third and 28 we literally just pick up what six and the only hope is to keep 7-eleven off the board before the halftime expires desperately needing points we can get back into this game rather embarrassing showing today i'm not a fan of this Bucky's defense. They were slurpy in their way all the way through and that pick is gonna seal it. We're gonna fall 0-1 in the inaugural concession store battle. So many fans disappointed, so many recruits disappointed. I'm really hoping they don't swing and flip their commit. Eric Avery and the Slurpy Warriors win this one. Good news is we didn't lose Sandland after losing to 7-Eleven, but this next week's gonna be telling. They have a visit to Georgia, so I'm scared if we can hold on. Another Another loss to LSU sealed it. Sandland headed to Georgia. I have never seen a more built receiver off the rip. 99 speed platinum shifty. I'm going to miss this guy. At least we just got Castile to commit, but man, we lost so many battles that I felt like we should have had. This is like the second time now I've made this mistake. Literally off the rip in the rebuild, I already got fired. So should have turned that setting off. I can't believe it. We had so much momentum and so many good players coming in. The season was disappointing. Jerky was jerky at best. Muskrat did nothing. Beef was the only receiver worth shaking a stick at. Just not a good look. So here's what's going to happen. I inevitably can't avoid the coach firing, but rather than quit and restart it all, I'm going to work my way back up either to get rehired at Bucky's or heck, we might go to the rival 7-Eleven after the way Bucky's just treated us. Guess it goes to show we're kind of expendable with these corporations. After all the blood, sweat, tears I put in for the Beavers, man, they quickly canned my butt and now I landed here in Arizona State. 
I'm gonna have to rebuild them like I did when I played against Tan Man in the Desert Duel. They're five and seven coming off a mediocre year in the Big 12. Don't worry, I'm not gonna show much of the Arizona State era like at all. I'm just gonna work here in the background, grind it out and get another job offer at one of the gas stations again. Just cause we got canned doesn't mean we can't look at Ben Ruffin since I'll never be able to play with this sweet, sweet stud. Richard Fernandez was a dog right behind him. So they were loaded. What could have been Elite Angel? Just crazy, man. All the things I did for this roster and for what? Just to get the can. The Bucky Beavers realized how valuable I was to their program when they could not manage to get the same recruiting class. They don't quite trust me yet as a head coach, but that's fine. We'll go ahead and rebuild them as a coordinator because you have full control of the recruiting board. I'll stick it to the Beaver in a good way. If I trust the process, I can work back up to head coach in due time. Only one year removed, we're reuniting and it feels so good. Dang, look what the Beaver dragged in. James Anderson is a program builder that knows how to win. Buddy can turn it up. Oh my goodness, strong roots, max intensity, roster retention. Take me to your leader. So for now, I guess that's fine. We'll settle into our coordinator role. Ben Ruffin, a little rough around the edges, but now that I'm here to coach him up, he'll be Heisman worthy. Brockwell's going to the NFL and Beef has graduated, but looks like Calcaterra is the only one trying to transfer. I think we can persuade him to stay. There we go. I'm back and I literally feel like I have the same amount of influence as I did when I was head coach. It's just the only difference I can control offense. Bucky's did pretty good for themselves, but man, I can't keep my eyes off Kevin Buck. And you see that right in the bottom right. Elite dev. We need this stud muffin. Not sure what they were doing messing around with two stars. Couldn't be me. Zoinks, dude. Bucky's has riches here in the transfer portal access to some of the best players i can make a splash by landing these guys right here five top tier transfer portal guys visits all scheduled this is gonna make a great impression on the team got jimmy Santoso, luke rich Graydon grimes chanston prox and brandon booker sweep 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 that's five for five for bucky's what a deal 25th place for recruiting class not too bad given the fact that i just brought in four other best commits 7-eleven just keeps it full throttle ninth best class. Training results has Bucky's up and big. 86 overall, 87 offense. You already know our guy Ben Ruffin leading the roster and our guy on defense from our recruiting class, George Barbosa, sophomore elite dev, 85 overall. Angel had a second year leap as well. So I'm excited to connect Ruffin and Angel, a Tennessee Bucky's employee to a Texas Bucky's employee. Maybe they can knowledge transfer and share best practices. Back like I never left, employee relations, finding the best talent. It's all good now. Now, Lee Thrasher, let's bring him in. Let's get this team right. Let's get back on track to a national championship. Cassius Flavors enjoys all flavor of Bucky Jerky. Would love to bring the Missouri City, Texas stud to Bucky Land. Defense looked like the most glaring need, and we're already finding a pair of defensive linemen that would be game changers. Oh, yeah, man. This is going to feel good. Del Peters, 90 speed right outside linebacker from Humble, Texas. Texas got some dogs, man, which is why Bucky's is headquartered here. Florida, no slouch for producing prospects. Geo Flood, one of them speedsters. Man, it's good to to be back. Let's kick it off with some week zero action against the Lobos. A new campaign awaits in our first look at rough and scrambling, slinging, touchdown Valentine. Let's get this thing started. Beavers up touchdown on the Lobos week zero. This should be a stomping. I just realized as offensive coordinator, I can also jump in and help out on defense. I had no idea that this was even possible. So pretty cool that I can also do that. But at the same time, it takes a little bit away from the immersion of being a coordinator. For the sake of our rebuild though, I just glad I got my job back as a strip sack fumble recovered by the Buckies. Ruffin, not rough by any means. He is out here and ready to play. Came out swinging and he's gonna find Angel, his elite tight end for six. Ruffin to Angel could seriously be a national championship connection. Capitalized on points after the turnover last Last drive, one minute to go before half on this drive. If you're looking for a good place to stock up on premium gas, you come to Bucky's. Our senior receiver gas not open on that last one. So with a fourth down here, I'm risking it. Yes, that's right. Angel, first down. 17 seconds left. Let's take some shots. Rough and scanning, surveying gonna go to the corner it's Baca he's got it down to 11 seconds let's go ahead and go to the middle Valentine picks it up and after a timeout we're all out of those we're not settling for three we're going for a touchdown gas got it six pump it up pump it up 
pump your gas at Bucky's. I really, really hope that 7-Eleven is watching this game because we're coming for them. Not trying to get too, too excited because we're in the SEC and the Lobos, well, they're the Lobos. So by all accounts, this should be a game that we easily clear. Remember, Ruffin was the best player coming out of high school. No one was better. No other position, no other player, nothing. Which is why I'm so excited to see what kind of campaign he has. Dotting up the Lobos, fourth touchdown of the day. Fire the arrow with the Bucky Nugs. Everyone's happy. Great start from this offensive coordinator, Sir Sponge, cooking it up. And a great start for the new defensive coordinator getting a pick and sealing this game. Shutout ball. Kicking it into overdrive. Gas for another one. He's got it. What a catch. The shutout was not complete. They scored a garbage time touchdown, but 35 7 onslaught. Beautiful way to start the season after some disappointing years. Ben Ruffin is the truth. I told you, just get me in here to coach him. He's going to be Heisman. Going to lose Ben Pitcock to 7-11 more than likely, but that's okay. We have a lot of guys we're starting to get an early lead on. A new era of Bucky's football has arrived. Ashton Maxwell Jr. leaning it forward. 11 tackles, two forced fumbles in the win against number one ranked Tennessee. I kid you not. This has gone well. After dropping two to Arizona State and Arkansas State, we put on a show against against Ole Miss and stun number one Tennessee. Even better, the performance just inspired so many recruits. Combs and Hagen's two five stars on the way, Orlando Gem running back, and Dell Peters, as well as new user Geo Flood and Gem tight end Jabari. So who cares if 7-Eleven landed Ben Pitcock? Because we just hit the lottery, I'm telling you. Hold on now, who let Bucky's cook? That's right, five five stars. Big Mike, little Dexter Shoemaker action. Matthew Jerry, Deshaun Combs, and Thrasher, a perfect name for the offensive line. Lee Thrasher is known for his hard work in Mesquite, Texas at the Bucky's location. He thrashes up the bathroom and then cleans it right up because he's a janitor down there and does great work. Honestly, this is our best shot yet taken on 7-Eleven. We're here to even the score. 7-Eleven wearing their crispy away uniforms. They look like the Eagles low key, but uh, hey, our retro beef unis, crispy. Last time we got beat down by 7-Eleven, we definitely did not have the roster that we have today. Let's go. I gotta give it up to 7-Eleven here. They got some insane Slurpees, so I'm ready to slurp them down. Slurpees aren't the only thing we're gonna be sucking down today. We're gonna get the fat W to big gulp all over. Fourth and inches, Ruffin's just gonna audible for a handoff, no protection, we're blown up. Instead, our defense is tasked with holding down the fourth. Third and five, make it fourth down. Three to zero zero with two minutes to go that is a low scoring affair here in the first half looking for better results on this drive our tight end angel just got hurt on that last play are you kidding me so now ruffin's gonna have to do it without one of his top weapons game literally crashed on me again i don't know why this keeps happening let me know in the comment section if that happens to you too but after a couple seasons in dynasty it'll just lag out. Because it crashed, we're gonna see what the Sim has in store. Can Bucky's hold on? We'll jump in in the fourth quarter if we're still within reach. 10-7, Bucky's hanging in there. In fact, good enough to have the lead. This second down conversion gives 7-11 new life. Low scoring affair, defensive minded battle. TFL on that last play, shedding and tackling another great stop. But yeah, man, I can't stand how it keeps crashing every dynasty rebuild I have. At least one time guaranteed which is so odd to me maybe it'll be fixed in a future update or maybe i need to clear out my storage i don't know either way we're back in this game and bucky's has a chance to win it 10-7 game cross midfield i think for the rest of the game we could chew clock and try to get another score when it's all said and done hex forget that we're just gonna go play action out to angel He's back and feeling good. Coaching adjustments turned on shoe clock. Let's just hand this thing off. Two minute warning out to Baca. He's got a step and a first down. Laid it in there perfectly. Ruffin, I'm digging it. Forcing 7-Eleven to burn their timeouts. We're looking to hand it off in cash. This gas station battle turned into a fight. And oh no, what were we doing? Forcing it to Angel. Our mistakes prove fatal unless we can respond in 40 seconds. Absolutely sold the game unless we have another trick up our sleeves that burnt so much clock oh my goodness angel come through 
dropped it. Now we're really in for it. Fourth and seven. Up the middle, it's the running back cloud. First down. Hustling everyone back up. 20 seconds and counting. Oh my goodness. Another open cloud across the middle. No one's there. And he is gone. 10 seconds. Nine seconds. Showboat and score. You get a nugget. You get a nugget and the golden nugget. Big Bucky style touchdown. Caesar Cloud, employee of the week after that play. Well done, sir. Just need to hold on for nine more measly seconds. Let's not give up a kick return touchdown. Play it safe. Spread everyone out. Play some cushion out here. He's going to chuck one last one up to double coverage. This should be it. He caught it, but that's game. Sayonara 7-Eleven. This one belongs to Bucky's. Wow, this is going really well. Ahead of schedule, after taking down 7-Eleven, we finished strong against LSU, Missouri, and Georgia, beating all three. That's good enough for first place at the moment here in the SEC. I guess it really does depend on what happens here between Tennessee, Missouri, and Alabama. But I think since we beat Missouri and Tennessee, we should have a direct nod into the championship game. What did I say? Let me have at it with my guys. Ben Ruffin, I took his game to the next level. Good stuff from Verone, Valentine, and Gas cashed in 10 times. Defense still kind of non-existent until you look at the turnover department. George Barbosa is that guy. Six interceptions. SEC championship game, we got in there a bit against Missouri. <laughs> Truly an inspiring story right now for Bucky's. We went from the basement absolute doo-doo to the SEC championship here in just a few years and even crazier of a story for coach sponge he went from coaching this squad bringing in guys like Ben Ruffin in the right units to getting canned because they had no patience for him then realizing oh wait he was employee of the year he was amazing so they brought him back and now he's here with the unit in the championship game. It's just crazy how it all worked out. I think I'm gonna mess around and go ahead and get myself an SEC championship. We're already down seven zip, but not for long once we cash in. Third and goal, a quick sprint out here on the play action. Gonna dump it to the running back. He hauls it in, but gets stuffed for a loss. Because the nature of the game, we're definitely gonna just take three. So we can go ahead and get more opportunities like this one, two minute drill, Angel. My guy, why did you not catch that? So back to gas. And that's a gas first down. A little bit of pep in the step from the team. Gonna hit him in stride. That's Baca decked. Thought the sophomore young gun out of Texas here was gonna hold it, but we'll go back to him. He's dropped two in a row. All right, son, you can sit down. Someone else will step up. And maybe that someone is Pujas with a spin. All right, fair is fair. Missouri locked us up, and it's gonna come down to this fourth down play. Angel, the security blanket when I'm in need, 100%. If we win this game, it spells great great things for the college football playoffs. If only I had some more sure-handed receivers. No, nah, but seriously, we're ahead of schedule and it's exciting to be a Bucky fan right now. Combine that with the second best class in all of the uh, class. We were looking good until we just threw an interception all of a sudden we're in danger here fourth and one fourth quarter up the middle clouds got it and oh man master class job here from missouri winding out the clock and beating us that hurts gonna have to hope for next season i was just in the middle of saying we would have got a buy in the college football playoff race but missouri's gonna now take that spot frederick kent i'm coming for you next season the tax slayer gator bowl is a letdown considering what the alternative was missouri after the sec championship got the 12th seed and dropped it off the rip to pittsburgh from there the race came down to miami and clemson clemson walks away chanston prox just put in his two weeks notice no longer gonna work at the bucky's location near canton tech Texas, he has decided to hit the NFL with a fourth round pick. Good for him. Like I said, we're making dreams come true with this new NIL rule. And bro, we're about to make so many more dreams come true. I mean, like, why wouldn't you want to come play here at Bucky State? The incentive is obvious. You get a great team and gas station salary on top of your playing time. So think about it. You're still racking up the dough while playing. Like It's like working a job while going to school, yet you're just playing football, which you're not just playing football. You are competing to be a national championship caliber player. So Bucky standards are just higher than everyone else. And this is what I'm talking about. It's really paying out here when you look at this panel, second place, five, five stars, 10, four stars. Before you take into account that 
everyone and their mother wants to transfer here too. Young stud Cole Lockridge playing for the Longhorns. Nah, forget those guys. Horns down. He's coming to Bucky's. Like I said, no shortage of options. Talk about 93 speed, 99 release, 99 short route, 98 jumping. Oh my goodness. We need some defensive line help. Look at Ariza. 90 tackle, 86 finesse, 91 strength, 96 agility, 90 hit power. Here they come. Roger Gradney, the first one of a bunch to come. Turning in a hard pitch and soft sell for both Lockridge and Ariza in hopes that we get a last minute swing. And there we go. We did complete the swing, at least for Ariza. Terrence Redfield, Stetson Landry, Dante Scott, Randy Bynum. This middle linebacker right here is 94 speed and he's only a sophomore. That is my user. Alexander Morris, Alex Hernandez. What? A Hall minus Lockridge going to Alabama. And come on now, that seals it. The best class in all of the nation. Bucky Beavers on top. 7-11 falling a little bit. Still solid with number 11. 21 four stars, but they could never do what we just did. Five, five stars, 17 fours. Preseason number 12, I'm telling you, this could be the year the Beavers are on a mission at 92 overall across the board. If not, we got Combs in the wing, Orlando locked and ready to go. Dexter Shoemaker, elite dev, a 91 overall transfer tight end to compliment Angel. Lee Thrasher, elite lineman. Bart Bouchard, Dom Lovelace, Mike Higgins. And here's Randy Bynum, the transfer. He's third on the depth chart behind a couple seniors, but I need to move him up. Speed kills and Matthew Jerry knows a lot about that. As I said, Bucky's prestige keeps skyrocketing and so does their recruiting prospects. No kidding. Look at how many job apps there are at Bucky's right now. Everyone wants to be a beaver. Even the best of the best like Evan Thomas. I'm curious to see all the prospects that rank us first. Will we get any insta commits? Five star didn't really think it would happen, but four stars on the other hand, it's very possible. Pinto, he is in just like that third time's a charm. Buckley. That would have made too much sense for Buckley to be a Bucky. If we preview the season to come, I honestly think we have a good shot at going pretty far. What was once a promising start, we've stuttered a little bit, so let's get right in mid-season against 7-11. Like I talked about earlier, the SEC can be unforgiving. Eighth ranked, toughest place to play in the college football landscape. 7-Eleven knows how to throw down, but so does Bucky's. We've really come a long way to become the team that we are today. Just got more to do. Looking to get this big third down off. 7-Eleven defense held. Doesn't mean they'll hold on this attempt here out to Baca. He's got it. No, he dropped it. Unbelievable. Gosh, Darn it. Now Evan Perry, the Slurpee Supreme, looking to get it done today. Both squads are four and three, which shows you just how important this game really is. Could not hold down the 7-Eleven receiver. He just cashed in. Bucky's does not like to see that. We do not approve. We don't endorse. We're going to have to work harder. Our two tight ends, Angel and Morris, that's where my eyes are looking. None of them really got open, so let's just throw one up. What a goal line stand right now from 7-Eleven. No one's really getting open here. I'm looking for someone to step it up and make a play, and the opposite just happened. Defense just returned the favor. We get another chance, and Valentine doesn't miss. 30 seconds left, 14-7 ball game. Make a play. Yes, good swap. Need to clamp down. I cannot afford more points to give up right now. We don't have any to spare. Oh, no. Third and one. Who's it going to be? Easy drag. Well, I'll be darn 7-11 up big. They want revenge for what we did to them last year, I suppose. All our receivers are cold right now, so let's just lob one up to the tight end while getting hit. Morris, go make a play. Don't know why that didn't hit. Looked right to me. So now we'll just take it ourselves. Fourth down, making a man miss, plunging forward. There we go. What a crucial, crucial conversion. And then we'll go back over the middle, diving grab. Valentine having a ball game. Cloud looking to finish it off. Touchdown. Silencing the green and orange. It's the fourth quarter. That last score was crucial. Now we can go ahead and hit up Baca for first and goal. Roughing coming through in the clutch. Ready to rough up 7-11 some more. Stretch didn't work the first time maybe the second time a burst and denial looks like this is going to need to come through the air so we step up and actually just say hey quarterback keeper wide open lane why not got ourselves a tie ball game folks go ahead and buckle in on this third and six come on someone stop him with our limited timeouts the craziest part is we need a stop right here right now and i have a feeling the run game is the call it is up the middle to the right bouncing off a tackler fourth down. One minute to show out and become a hero. It starts with a dime to Valentine who just takes off. Holding's gonna stall our drive. Pushing us out of field goal range. Cannot have that whatsoever. Morris thankfully is gonna pick it up and some. Not just content for three. I want to get an actual crack at winning this thing which our running back had a nice little step. 
Ruffin, first down. Still looks like we got one timeout, but I'm keeping that handy in our pocket. Go to the tight end on the drag. He's going to catch and run. A little slow, but hey, first and goal. Hurrying back up, saving that timeout. I don't know when we should use it. Eight, seven, six, probably right after this play, if I had to guess. And what the heck? I just got debated. I could have sworn he was on a corner, so I just threw a game ceiling interception because I pre-anticipated him cutting left, and I didn't know what play I was on because audibles weren't working. No huddle, hurry up offense. Couldn't figure it out. Excuses, excuses from my end for sure. Tim Corsack takes it away. That seals it, man. That's ridiculous. Back breaking. I think there goes our chances of competing in a playoff spot. Underperformance is an understatement. We lost to Akron, Tennessee, Texas, 7-Eleven, Missouri, and LSU to cap out the end of the year. Crazy, crazy, crazy. A lot of one possession losses. So as disappointing as it is, I think next year actually will be the year where those one point. So as disappointing as it is, I think next year will be the year where those one possession games go our way. A couple more professionals in the making, Alexander Morris, Brent Blair. Going into year five, why not one more shot at some of the best? This schedule looks just as unforgiving as the last. So it's a matter of time until we find out if this roster is the one. Wow, okay, jumping into the end of the season on a six game win streak, that's insane. The crazier part is we didn't get into the championship game, which has me wondering, as I'm gonna go check for the first time, are we in the bracket? No, we're not, this is not good. This is a major bummer, getting the cheese at Citrus Bowl against the Golden Gophers. That's gonna cap off, I believe, the five year window right here, so. Uh, we did not get it in time. We'll go to the sixth year to see if that's finally the season we need. Gearing up for this final hoorah, we have the biggest transfer portal of all. This is crazy. So many elite players. Guys like Brent Rowe are going to be holding it down. Keon Bloom, Esteban Dermacato, J.R. Cologne, Dalton Riggett. Now that our quarterback has graduated, the team is definitely weaker at that spot, but deeper across the board. 90 overall, this is for all the marbles. No pressure, Richard Fernandez. This is your time to shine. How about some employee recognition, though, for George Orlando? He's a sophomore with 91 overall juice. Shoemaker, also a 91 overall, and he's maxed out his route running. 99 release and deep route, medium route, short route. Oh my God. Gosh, I haven't seen something quite like this. Honestly, couldn't be happier with how we have built this team. It's stacked across the board. And this is a look for the 13th ranked Beavers. Four non-conference matchups. Virginia's tough, then Arizona UConn before taking on the SEC. Not as many ranked names in here in the year of 20. 29 20 30 7 11 went five and seven last year i think we can handle them and make our way right into the championship game and the natty halfway point the sim is doing wonders right now after losing that game to virginia massive streak here against fcs southwest arizona yukon kentucky tennessee and south carolina stringing them together ranked third in the nation six and one how will we do in the final five dub skis against 7 11 fresh brisket on the board against vanderbilt another one against missouri you know this team's a problem when they knockout Georgia and final game of the season against Ole Miss dropped it to Ole Miss what a shocker now we get the Texas Longhorns in the championship game dropped this game earlier in the rebuild to Missouri now it's time to hook them horns little in-state Texas battle Buckies versus Longhorns this is perfect because secretly at heart a lot of Longhorn fans are also Bucky Beaver fans crazy I know a little controversial yes but it's true Beavers are a fan favorite across this great state. We'll get to check out the man himself, Fernandez, in his senior campaign, leading the Beavers to a 10-2 year. So many ballers out here, just like Shoemaker. We already read that he is a 99 route runner and everything. But our concern right this minute is just taking three and getting first blood. Gonna keep my eyes pretty set on Shoemaker here. I wanna see the 99 at work. Look at him just get past the star corner. We'll hurry up, put him on a slant. He looks like he's gonna get some release on him yet again. Great comeback, though. Fernandez is going to sling something here on fourth down. That pressure came in so fast, but no match for Shoemaker. It's a new era of Bucky players, these are not the same guys we started with, but we definitely recognize every single player that's helped shape this program. They all walked so we could run. Woo, that was crispy and 
Dang, dude. Texas. Clearly still one of the best teams out there this deep into the rebuild. No doubt about it. Cha-ching. <laughs> Chin music. Big number 81. Shoot your arrow. No lead is safe when you're playing Texas. You got to scramble away from danger. You got to take your educated plays. And sometimes, just sometimes, you got to be aggressive. Like the Longhorns are doing, they're going for it. We're trying to stop him out of reach. What the heck? Number two just zigged and zagged that in and out. All up in our Bucky Nugs. I'm going to hand it off and try to end this game right here on this drive. Just like I was hoping a couple years back when we were facing Missouri, if we win this game, we got national championship aspirations. Thankfully, we can take this one all the way down the two minute warning. And now we can go back to pounding the stone. This play right here, as you can see, is called Buck Sweep. Got to be a successful play call for Buckies. Let's try it out, shall we? Sweeping, cutting. Yeah, I take that. Not going to run it because I want to end it now. Third and five. We got a man. I no way the linebacker just jumped back up. That was actually insane how he sold in like a blitz and then backed up and jumped for the pick. I did not see that coming. And no, they convert the fourth. On third down, they settle for three and nail it. So this could go OT. Unless, just unless, we go ahead and burn someone and put them on a highlight montage, just like Rosario. The running back's got a step. He came down and dropped it. Thanks, buddy. Getting me excited all for nothing. I will not forget that. So this is probably going to go to OT. It will. Fernandez, I need your best stuff. OT, OT. There's never much love. When we go OT, great play call. Rosario spinning around at the one. In just one play, we got all the way down here to the one, hand it off, and cash in for pay dirt. Just got to clamp down. No long horn zone here. We have to do all we can to finish this game off now. Make a play. Someone hit a guy. Second and three. This could be a run. It's actually a jet. Hand off. 31 scores. Take two for the Longhorns, double OT, another jet motion. This time it's a handoff once again, breaks free and fights for six. That was actually insane that he just got all those yards. Up the middle once more, 32 bounces in and out scores. Why are they running with such authority? They do not convert the two point attempt. So there is life for us to score, go for two and win this thing. And shoot, I'm telling you now, we need all the life we can get, but yep. You just saw what happened. Not doing Bucky's a service here at all. That's two SEC champions down the tube. I don't even know. I hope we get in. The homie we just lost to won the Heisman, but thank goodness we get the 11th seed and crack in to the first round against Illinois. This is all about redemption after I sold with Fernandez, let guys like Jimmy Santoso down, and really, really jeopardized JP Royer's chances at a ring. Same with Joey Rucci. Taj Cheatham and Elias Valerio held down the secondary, and I'm gonna need a whole lot more turnovers from them in this battle. And so it begins. It's a long way to the top. The national championship playoff bracket is here. Illinois round one fight and I want to see what the sim is all about are the Bucky Beavers up to par one quarter at a time we have the seven three lead go ahead and make it a safety only six point cushion not feeling very good about that insane how big defense was all game long Fernandez looking to ice this thing out in the fourth quarter one drive is all it takes good handoff to Rosario just one more tote for two yards should do the trick dodging 86 the blitzer and I think that should be it Illinois down to their final timeout. They're going to take it now. And you know what? I think we can shoot this clock out. Or shoot, I spoke a little too early. We need a first down still. So a direct snap to the running back. And now you see this right. It's fourth down. We've got them pinned really far back. I think we can go ahead and play hero. End this thing right away. Go in the chin. That will do it. Game number one goes Bucky's way in a defensive battle. Nine to six. What a score. Looks like we went back to the early 1900s. On to the next. It's the Sugar Bowl. And it's a rematch. It's Texas Longhorn time. Want some more smoked brisket on the board for real. Let's smoke up some Longhorn. Again, just like the last one, I'm going to see if the Beavers can hang and get some revenge on the old Longhorn. So far, they were doing good. And now it's getting closer into the evening. Up by one. This is living up to par. The SEC Championship was an OT thriller. Makes sense for this game to be a thriller as well as the Heisman just takes it in. Martinez walked the dog. Only five point lead. The best part is that Fernandez can 
actually become a hero hero if he just plays big. Whoa! Talk about big. That surprised me. Ain't no way he had the concentration to pull that thing down. That was actually absurd, and I did not expect that. Seriously insane. Let's go to Shoemaker for some more magic. Got past Illinois. This is to get past Texas. Chin got decked. Imagine if we had Ruffin still, man. Fernandez has been serviceable at best. We just have a good team. Elite Heisman-like quarterback play would take us over the top for sure, but we can easily still get it done with a guy experienced like Fernandez. We're just going to need to get it done on fourth and goal with a halfback stretch, cutting it. Rosario takes the lead. It's the Sugar Bowl special. Fresh brisket on the board. Yes. Bitter, bitter, sweet moment. That was the touchdown. That will be the difference in this game. Texas has met their end. One last first down. We'll seal it. Jet touch. Santoso with the spin, and he's got it. Sweet, sweet revenge. Good night, Texas. That's what I'm talking about. Beaver Nation stand up. Giving gas station employees the dream of a lifetime. It's a new era of NIL football. It's a new game. Another one in the game just gets better and better. The stakes get higher and higher. It's the Boilermakers. Seeing how well the Beavers can stand. Computer versus computer. Up 10-0, 17-0, 24-0. Uh, guys, did Purdue come to play today? Final seconds of the game, we win. Normally, I like to jump in in the fourth quarter, but it was convincing until we gave them a little cushion in the fourth quarter. But you know what that means? That seals it. We're going to the national championship game. Richard Fernandez did just enough. This is going to make for another really interesting matchup, another in-state Texas battle. Y'all know how much the Horn Frogs love their Bucky Beavers. 10th seed, 11th seed showdown. And just for the memes, you already know we had to do this. The national championship game, TCU wearing their purple. Wait until you see what we're wearing. Bucky Nuggets, national championship edition. I'm not kidding. Let's bring them out. This team has been building and fighting hard, pulling together the best employees from across the nation to one team with one goal a national championship do the little nug dance man 2031 national championship game i don't think tcu is ready for this as i've mentioned a couple times now fernandez has been like the perfect serviceable quarterback to do just enough getting the ball where it needs to go the compliments really belong to the team as a whole they have all the right pieces there's enough confidence in this team that we can even go for it on a fourth and 13 and believe it's possible santoso only up by seven you don't realize how dangerous that was a turnover would have actually been really costly something we couldn't afford so we'll count our nuggets like we count our blessings there are a lot of them and we do it again on fourth and goal now a fresh set a first for fernandez to scramble to his left make a move walk it in beavers up by two scores before half game's getting closer and closer to its end it is a dire situation for the frogs and that play was big giving them the chance to go for it on this fourth and goal stepping out and delivering wow they bring it within a touchdown with a few minutes to go i'm impressed by what i saw but we're gonna hold on to this eight point cushion i'm telling you you're gonna have to pry it from my cold dead bucky nuggets if you're gonna beat us third and eight let's go back out to the right side we got the edge just no good blocks out there yep you see that right we're punting the ball no chance i go for it right against the end zone let's let the defense get the final stand it's gonna have to be a big fold they need a touchdown and two point conversion so i would be devastated if they do that fourth and four here it is all on the line scrambling to his left and stepping into it number five's got it and yep it's official they actually scored and got the two-point conversion so we have little time to work coach wants us to run out the clock and go to ot but fernandez says trust me i can step up after that sack i don't know if i believe him i'm gonna try to isolate shoemaker there against the corner send an all go and he got away but what was that throw? Only way I can describe it is unfortunate. He was out of there. For Lovelace in the defense here, just can't give up a big play. They have no timeouts, so we're chilling. Oh, looks like they're gonna take one last shot. This is something we're not really prepared to deal with, but it'll fall and we'll go to OT. Fernandez and the Beavers on offense. Our first attempt here in overtime, we got Shoemaker. Slants over the middle. Yep, that freeze open. There's Troop and a two-play touchdown. Settling for the one until double overtime. You can't go for one. Got her done in just two plays. Excited to see that. And I'm excited to see, oh, what could have been a game ceiling pick. Hold your nuggets, folks. This thing's gonna come down to the wire. I thought for sure that could have been game, but 
Jeez Louise, this TCU offense just too shifty. Now he's going to send the running back in motion. Let's just make sure our zone is covered here. Clamp it down. He dumps it off to Lovelace. Big hit. Rocked him into a whole nother world out there. I'm surprised he wasn't seeing nuggets. Just like the quarterback is after Eric Tolson decks him. Great play call there on defense. Now it's a third and 16. Decked again. Defense playing hero Joey Rucci, the junior hitting the gritty. Whatever you do, folks, don't go anywhere. This is it. The final play. Fourth and 23. It's all on the line. He gets destroyed. Another sack to end this game. And your Bucky Beavers are national champions after a impressive hold three sacks in a row to seal it tcu goes down in overtime and man that is going to cap off this rebuild what a fun experience giving the gas station employees the experience of a lifetime and there's so much more than a gas station they're a convenience store they actually have the world record for doing that and this general manager is going to get his general manager salary on top of the bonus incentives for performance come on now tcu you could never do something quite like this this program is built to win and built to encourage more and more prospects if you had as much fun as i did and soaked up this rebuild you'll want to check out all the other college football 25 rebuilds on this channel we got team builder we got full irl teams interviewing teams in person but hey this was the bucky beavers this was their time to shine and with that king sponge out